Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. My name's Danny and you're watching Crafty D Sculpting. This is my fourth video that I've put out so far. Uh, and this time we are doing Jack Skellington from The Nightmare Before Christmas. Again, if you've not seen me before, I am a new sculptor. I've only been doing sculpting for about three months. I've never touched clay before three months. And if you have a look at the video before this one, it will show you some of my sculpts that I've done in the three months building up to doing Jack on this one. I have done this as a commission for somebody and they want Sally to go with him. So the next video that I do, there will be a video of Sally. And then I'm going to do a nice decorative base and put both Jack and Sally on the same base. But anyway, before we get into the video, I would absolutely love it if you could subscribe to the channel um, as I plan to get a sculpt out at least once a week to a fortnight at the most. I do suffer with a few problems like fibromyalgia, so if I can't get them out every week, I will endure to get them out as soon as possible. But there shouldn't be any more than 14 days apart at the very, very most. So sit back and enjoy, and let me know in the comments below how I got on. Anyway, I'll be back in a minute. Right, and we're back. And first of all, we're going to start with the armature. And for the armature, I'm actually using two pieces of 2.5 millimeter uh, aluminium wire which I've strung together in a drill to make one piece. I will show you in a later video how I do that um, but yeah I've just got a bit of scrap wood two holes drilled in it and plopping it in place. Gonna work it out with the thin floral wire and work out where the center is and wind a load of that round to secure it all in place. Then we're going to attach the arms, doing the same technique, wrapping the floral wire around to secure the arms in place. Once that's done, we can then get the piece, uh, another piece of aluminium. This is slightly thicker, 3.5 mil aluminium, and we're going to use that, place it in place, and use that for the head. Again, we're going to wrap the floral wire around it just to secure that in and I've wedged it into the floral wire and used waste to hold the, uh, the bottom part of that wire in. Right, we're using Cos Clay Medium Firm for this sculpt. We've rolled a load out in the pasta machine and now we've got some aluminium foil and we're just going to bulk out his centre just a little bit. Don't need obviously too much because he's a skeleton, he's rather skinny. Now that's done, we've got to get some of our uh, liquid clay. We'll put some of that all over him, get all that brushed in nicely just before we attach the first piece. And there we go, first bit of clay is attached. We'll get all that works into him. Just try and get his rough shape figured out. Slicing down the middle, just trying to find his waistline, trying to find. His rough body shape. I believe I've got his body slightly out of proportion on this one, but you can see I'm just working it all in. More liquid clay down his legs before we get some sausages of clay. We'll cut that down the middle, and we're just going to work that on in place. Just getting it on rough for the moment, trying to make sure we've got an even coverage all the way through. If I find I've got any flat areas, I did whack a little bit more on and then it blending it all in with a spoon tool as you can see. Halfway through a cup of coffee as well. Right now to try and get his jacket done. And we're just gonna we've made one, I'm just using that as a template to try and get a rough shape for the for the other side. As you can see struggling a little bit fingers and thumbs still trying to figure out what tools are best for what as I say I am self-taught but yeah getting these on now just give them a little pat down I haven't really worked them in maybe I should have used a little bit of liquid clay but it seemed to work getting the other side done just getting it down and cutting it down into place Do 
this collar. Maybe I've done this wrong. You'll probably tell me in the comments below whether I've messed up on this bit. Maybe I should have carried it on a little bit further when I was actually cutting the part. Now we're getting his other side of his jacket. So it looks the same as the other side. Just blending it in. Just getting some slivers of clay, just working him in to try and get the rough wrinkles, pull him from where the button will be on his jacket and on his trousers. And still trying to figure out how to do all this in front of the camera as well. So I'm all fingers and thumbs trying to get bits in, but we're getting it all blended in. My favourite little tool there, the spoon. seem to use the, the, uh, the spoon more than any other tool at the moment, apart from your fingers obviously. Get all them blended in nicely, and also my other favourite tool is the silicon tool. Putting on the button, and we're going to get the ball stylus and just push in the centre. Now onto the neck, just going to cut a little bit of clay, and just work it into place. Again, I wish I'd put a little bit of um, liquid clay on first of all. Blending that in now. Just getting it all worked in as best as I can. Now getting to work on his bow tie. Cutting out either side, just roughly getting them how I like them. Second part of his bow tie is his bat head. Again, I need to sort out my camera work. I've got um, a new cable coming for one of my cameras, so I should be able to see exactly what I'm doing. But yeah, we get all the uh, bat head made, put his ears on. We we'll roughly make that up. Not bad, little first try. Just putting this together on here first of all, see how it all goes. We are going to bake that separately on that silicon pad. The silicon pads are brilliant, by the way, enough that the clay doesn't stick to them. And then ideal for the oven as well. So there we go, that's what that's going to look like. And so we're going to bake that separately, but for now we're going to get on with the arms. Again, just finished sausages of clay, just trying to make sure they're even all the way around working it all back into the rest of the jacket doing this lower part of the arms I find the arms are a bit easier to do in two parts just helps define where the elbow is I find looking good. Now on for his hands, my worst part, well that and faces. I'm just going to get some little balls of clay, flatten them out into a rough sort of hand shape. Now onto the fingers which I've got some thin floral wire and little sausages of clay going to work that, push it in, just work it around, it takes me a couple of minutes on the first one just to figure out how it all goes, but once I'm happy with it, eventually, sometime today, maybe, are we going to get there, take your time with this one, I think we're about there, are we, maybe, yes, yep, oi, and we fit that into place, a little bit of the floor wire sticking out the back end of it, I'll show you that in a minute with one of the other fingers, I believe he's only got four fingers, so he gets three, and a thumb, 
work all in with a sperm tool again, whatever tool you find more comfortable, uh, that's the best one for me, it might not be the best one for the job. That's all part of the process of learning. A bit of a silicon tool, just pushing it all in. Just trying to refine some of it, even though I don't do a great, great job with the hands on this one. On goes the thumb. We do define the shape a little bit and make it a little bit better. Now on for the collars of his, or the cuffs of his uh, jacket. Just flatten pieces out in the um, pasta machine, and cut them down and then just working them into the rest of his arm to make the jacket sleeve. Also my dog getting in the way, as you can see me there, picking out hair. I've got a giant German Shepherd as well as the puppies in the last video, and his hairs get everywhere. I forgot to work in some clay to the back of the hands to make the fingers a little bit more defined from the other side, so we're now doing that now. Another fun part is the feet. All I'm going to do with this one, I just get some bits of clay, just cut them down so they're roughly into shape, and then cut either side and around the top just to try and get the general shape. His shoes are quite easy on this one. So we're just literally just trying to find the shape and then we can mess about and mold it all into place how we like it. For that, I'm using the end of a knife, or the flat end of a, the flat face of a knife, should I say before going on to the silicon tool. Just to get that sort of lovely defined round shape. And also my favorite tool, the spoon tool, just working it from underneath just to round up the end, ends and get more of a sole. Then I'm gonna take whatever tool this is called and try and make the hill just by stabbing it in and then turn it at a slight angle to make that hill shape. Do that on both sides. Right, then we're going to get onto the cuff, cuff of these trousers. Just going to work that in like I did with the arm. down with isopropyl alcohol that's what I use to soften it up and just get rid of all the fingerprints so after we spend about two or three minutes with this I then realize that I've made a mistake and I've left something off can anyone see what it is yet and if you guess right it was the towel part of his coat how did I miss that so right we're gonna quickly cut that just gonna make some rough cuts all the way down to get the four or five uh, parts of the towel. I don't know what they're called. I'm sure someone will let me know. Just giving it a quick shape up. Just trying to find that shape so I can match it into the back of his coat. Clothes nice and soft, so I've used that isopropyl alcohol, so this actually smooths together lovely and easy. Just refining it and making sure it's all nice and smoothed in before we hit it again with isopropyl alcohol to remove them new fingerprints. He's looking good. Right, put him to one side. We're going to get 
some more aluminium foil and we're going to beat the living hell out of it to try and get his head shape. I really went to town smacking that up before putting a drill through the middle of it so I can put a wooden skewer through the side of it. So I know exactly how it's going to be coming out of well, sitting on his neck. We'll try and roughly mark out where his eyes and his mouth is going to be positioned. Now I'm going to get a large ball stylus and mark out either eye the rough position of it before getting the larger side of it and pushing down and just wiggling about just to get the general eye shape. They need sort of like pushing up a little bit, they're a little bit sort of eggy shape. Now just figuring out where the mouth's going to be before pushing in the centre part. We're going to have an open mouth on this one. So just generally finding that shape and giving it a good squishing. Move on to a silicon tool. and pushed in. Then we're going to get a little triangle of clay. We're going to get a little triangle of clay and just squish that in for his nose and work it in. He's, there's only a little bit of a bump coming out of his skull, it's not much. some nostrils. Just giving the inside of his mouth a bit of a wash over with liquid clay and then we're just making these little tiny balls of clay and then we're just positioning them quite randomly around the in bottom and the top of his, his jaw, or his mouth shall I say. And then we're going to bake him for about 30 minutes, 135 degrees. Right, I'm using this stuff called Boss Stick once he's been cooled down. And we're just going to plop some of that in that hole and stick him onto that, onto his neck. And we're going to do the same for his um, bow tie. We're going to wait for that to dry. Before we get onto paint. Now I'm using these army paints. And obviously we're going to start off with the black. So we're just going to get that literally everywhere. So maybe I should have started off with the white because it needed a couple of coats and it was a bit easier to get to get to them sort of areas at first of all. As you can see I'm getting all these details in and then I realised I hadn't done the white and it was a bit of a struggle. Getting the eyes all painted in. Wiping away any mess that I make on the outside just so I didn't have to really wait until later on and give him many coats of the white that I have to put on his head. Getting the inside of his mouth. And here you see I'm going to start struggling with the white. the eyes on the back just literally tapping the paintbrush around until it covers the area that I need and then as you can see here I'm already struggling with the pinstripes which were an absolute nightmare these pinstripes took me around three to four hours to get completed and as you can see from from the get-go I was messing up with wiping them away and restarting 
yeah, I eventually found my flow and started getting there with the smaller areas, just getting a feel for the paintbrush. Now, I will be treating myself to some paint pens, acrylic paint pens, as soon as I can, because I believe the paint pens would be a lot easier than things like pinstripes. These pinstripes were a nightmare. For areas that I did mess up, I did actually get a black paintbrush later on and just go on the inside of the white lines and just try and repair any areas where I've made any overly big white blotches. As you can see, the pinstriping for days. But there we are, finally, pinstriping is done onto the head. Right, now we're going to use a mixture of white and bone white. I think I used a 75 white to a 25% of the bone white to get this sort of mix. At first I used a 50-50 mix but it was still a little bit too dark for me. So we went a little so we went a little bit whiter. As you can see he's coming out really nice now really coming together. Final part, getting his hands done. Off camera, I did do some little black marks around his knuckles. I forgot to add that in, but for now, he's done. And he's finished. Jack Skeleton. I'm really, really pleased with the way he's come out. Extremely happy. This is a temporary base at the moment that I've just throwing him on until I get the uh, the bigger base where I'm going to put Sally on as well. But yeah, I am extremely happy with the way he's turned out. His proportions are nearly there. I think his body's a little bit longer than it should be. But he's about 10, between 10 and 11 inches tall. Pinstriping was an absolute nightmare. It took me between three and four hours to get all the pinstriping done. Luckily enough, in the actual film, his pinstripes are not, you know, 100% straight. They are a little bit wavy, so that, that was a blessing in disguise when it comes to making him. And, yeah, as I say, I'm absolutely well happy with the way he's turned out. Anyway, guys, we're going to get on. We're going to show you some uh, some B-roll of him um, afterwards. And, uh, yeah, all I've got to say is please, please, please subscribe and like to the channel. Help me beat that algorithm. Let me get up a little bit, get me a few subscribers. And yeah, as I say, the more subscribers I get, the more determined I'll be to get more of these characters done for you. So yeah, anyway, guys, this is Jack Skeleton. I'm Danny, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now. <laughs>